We'd like to take a moment to thank our friends at Hester and Cook for sponsoring this podcast. Hester and Cook believes there's always a moment to celebrate, and we could not agree more. They make the most beautiful tablescapes for your holiday hosting, all from paper. Yep, you got to see it to believe it. So stop by their stores around Nashville and Franklin or shop online for the season's best holiday decor, gifts, and specialty tabletop items. Use promo code MAGNOLIA for 15% off your first purchase in store or online at hesterncook.com. What do you think of when you hear Labor Day? I think, get those white pants in one more time, the pools are often about to close, and if you have need of an appliance or a mattress, this might be a good time to buy as they are often on sale. Join us at the table as we discuss the roots of Labor Day and how we like to celebrate. Laura Beth, and we are Steel Magnolias, the strength of steel with the grace of a magnolia. We are here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South, and we've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. That's so funny you talked about white because I almost wore my white sweater over here to get it in before Labor Day. I don't have white pants. I just feel like white pants are just asking for trouble. So well, I don't own any yeah, of those. I hear you. But I was going to wear my white sweater, but it's too hot. So Well, and I tell you, I love winter white in the winter. Like, that's still okay. Yes. It's that true white. Yes, white linen, yeah. like a white linen shirt yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's the kind of thing that is sometimes frowned upon <laughs> if it's later in the year. Well, tell us, like, what are we even celebrating? Do we, do, does anyone know? <laughs> yeah, well, so labor activists had pushed for a federal holiday to recognize the many contributions that workers have made to America's strength and prosperity and well-being. So the very first Labor Day holiday was celebrated on a Tuesday, September the 5th, 1882. Wow. In New York City in accordance with the plans of the Central Labor Union. Then the second Labor Day was held just a year later in 1883 on that same day. But it was 1894 when 23 more states had adopted the holiday. And on June 28, 1894, President Grover Cleveland signed a law making the first Monday in September of each year that national holiday. Okay. So... Yeah, we get to celebrate the strength and esprit de corps of the trade and labor organizations and community. I love it. I love it. I think that many people, um, you know, they obviously know this is a three-day weekend, so they're boating or they're, you know, maybe getting one last little road trip in. Maybe they're going to see some family before they have to not see them again before the holidays. Um, But I feel like sometimes if you don't work in the in those trades or in the labor force yeah this is just another monday it's just a monday that other people get to join you (laughs) right now your kids are at home or yeah maybe you even have more demands on you that's true this is their first day off of school since starting because they just got going well in many areas of the country they don't start till after yeah right so i but i just was thinking i was like okay so if if you have like kids and that's your job, that's your work yes. way of labor is care for your kids, care for your home, then just take the day off of something that you do for them, like laundry or like clean. Ain't happening today. Cleaning up the kitchen. Like we're using paper plates today. Yeah. You know? So anyway, that's just my little thought on how, how you can celebrate those if us. you're not in a trade union yes. or something. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, and then. For those that are self-employed, sometimes um, you got to just push through and take the holiday on another day. Because you're you're more busy because people have, have the, the day, day off, off so, so they would like to have your you service. Just, yeah. 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 Honor, honor that nod in a different way on a different day. <laughs> you're like, I celebrate Labor Day the second Monday <laughs> of every September. Well, you did say cookout. And we do mean cookout. We don't mean barbecue. Yeah, let's chat about that. So. And you know, I mean, there could be barbecue there. 
that's what's so funny is like they're probably that's probably not the case but if you're having a cookout there might be barbecue there but you're not having a barbecue if you're doing hamburgers hot dogs and those are the sorts of things we're talking about yeah, so that's have, why it's called that a happened cookout. at our church recently when they were verbiage of we were having a barbecue yeah and mom was like where is the barbecue yeah and they were like, the hot dogs are right over there. And the hamburgers and then, are here. Yeah. And she's like, this is a cookout. <laughs> <laughs> so a cookout, and I think it's so funny the way that guy Landon talks that's so popular on yes. TikTok and Instagram. Yes. The way he describes it is, um, it's when you cook outside. Yeah. That's, that's But that's also a smoker sometimes, too. So a cookout is casual, doesn't take all day, and a barbecue is a whole ordeal. That's what he says. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> So, I mean, I think of, like, your main dish being hamburger, hot dog, maybe fried chicken. Yeah, um, maybe. Or, like, maybe fried catfish. Yeah, um, yeah. But I still think hot dogs, hamburgers, yeah. for some reason. Yeah. That's And there's a new, um, not that it's new, but kind of a new trend that I wanted to talk about, too. And that's the smash burger. Oh, what's a smash burger? So, it's a hamburger, but okay. it's cooked, like, on a griddle. Oh. Which you can even just have a griddle okay. on your grill, on your yeah. normal grill that you use. Yeah. But, yeah. Y- and they're small, they're usually kind of smaller, and you put parchment paper down and smash it. Oh, okay. So it goes thin. Okay. And it cooks real, um, like it gets crispy. So you're just the patty? Yeah, just the patty. So it's like a um, steak and shake burger. That's yes. how theirs are. Yes. Think that like that, yeah. But and there, lots of restaurants have them now, yeah. or people are doing this smash burgers. They cook really fast, yeah. So I wanted to mention. I think that's a great thing to actually make that's when you have so a crowd, good. yes, because you can cook them real fast. Yeah, you got to already have your bread ready to go. Like if you're going to toast the bread or anything, do that first. Yes, already have your cheese sliced. Yes, if so you're doing good. that, all the things yeah. need to be ready. Yeah. And then you just do these. How cool. I know, love where that. where you push it down. Like you're just with a spatula. Yeah. But the parchment keeps it like to go, makes it go flat. Yes. Yes. And the meat doesn't and it's come not through. And getting the grooves of your exactly. spatula. Yeah. And yeah. Just cook it a couple minutes, two or three minutes and then flip it. Do it, you know, maybe one minute. Then it cooks pretty fast. I love it. And put it together and you're done with that. But yeah, people are loving the. Smash, Smash burger. burger. I did not know that that was a thing, nor what it was called, but I did eat a steak and shake burger before I came over here, so it was fresh on my mind. Well, <laughs> so now you you know the theme of that, and I just thought that kind of is a fun theme. Yeah, to I like that. Have well, it your little shindig. You know what gets me most excited about cooking outside is that it means we're that much closer to tailgating season for yes, college Lord. football. I just put football games on my calendar so tennessee's opening game is labor day weekend i googled ut football schedule and i was aghast ours is hard no i was aghast to see the university of texas schedule come up when i put ut football schedule oh whatever not cool google (laughs) not cool the other ut anyway that does mean teams on the that are you know there are a lot of games that opening weekend, and I guess I should say University of Texas is one of those because they are joining the SEC next year. I know year. that's a whole nother. We have another. We have one season without them. That's not till next year. Anyway, okay. I do feel like we'll be referring to a lot of previous episodes today just to like expound on. So you know things like sweet tea. I'm not okay. going into sweet tea, right? We have a whole episode on sweet tea, but sweet tea should be part of your Labor Day cookout. A hundred percent it should. If you want some great tips and things to do. Potato salads. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and go. So I Well, I'm just saying that's one we can link to, but I do want to discuss it just a little. So for drinks, I like to keep it simple. I mean, water and sweet tea, or if you want to do a BYOB situation, I don't feel like you have to be having batched cocktails and doing all the things for Labor Day because the whole essence is like this is sort of a day of rest or day of oh you're so good you know you have batched cocktail ideas don't you (laughs) and then I'm exhausted (laughs) after it's over so but it's so freaking hot that I love something frozen (laughs) that's true be it cocktail or mocktail yeah I just love frozen yeah and um there's some great frozen choices out there all these frosés and yeah slushes 
There's a watermelon frosé I was going to make this summer and I n- never did. So that well, would be a fun one. It's funny you say that because in the same month, I got my Southern Lady and my Southern Living. Yeah. And they both had their own version of a watermelon frosé. Okay. And I was thinking, when, you know, two things. One was, okay, it even happens in magazines where yeah. there's overlap in the yes. same month. And sometimes I get frustrated when that happens with a podcast and a magazine. Yeah. But it just means you're on trend and on, it does. And on theme. So, um, And then I thought, I love both of those magazines. And I don't mean to pit them against each other, but it would be kind of funny to... To do a, oh, do a frosé off or yeah, something. Yeah, like you make one and I make the other and we see which ones was better. That's I don't know. Fun. What do you think? I like that. Okay, so I will give you that. Frozen would be a wonderful reprieve from the heat. Of whatever. Like, be that that you have some kind of popsicles. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get into some very cool desserts okay. to take the edge off for sure. I think you do need a dip, whatever the sort of entree is that you're doing. And cool ones would win in my book so you know if it's just a spinach cream cheese ball or yeah the thing you got to be a little bit careful of is if you are outside outside, yeah making sure you got it with some ice under it or something because all that yes mayonnaise sour creamy stuff yeah is yeah that's good you should put it on a bed of ice yeah so bowl within bowl kind of situation exactly yeah but you know pimento cheese and some cut celery and carrots there's always those are a winner at every a time for pimento cheese there's that's right always always a a hit and probably a good salad would be nice yeah I'm still trying to squeeze in for me this is kind of a marker of we're stepping out of summer and into the next season so I'm still trying to milk for all it's worth the tomatoes the corn the cucumbers the Mm -hmm. watermelon Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah the strawberries did you say strawberries i didn't but yeah 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 so all of those kind of things yeah so i had on my list like strawberry pecan and spinach salad Mm -hmm. usually there's like a goat cheese in that or something apples with candied walnuts and romaine lettuce that's a good salad combo i mean a straight fruit salad you could do the cucumber salad like you mentioned or a tomato corn kind of cowboy yeah. caviar yeah. or just a corn salad with some fresh I love that juice. watermelon salad that has um fresh mint and um feta yeah and then like a balsamic on yes. top and I have a product I need to mention okay it's just from our gr- local grocer I get it at Kroger oh yeah the brand is A L E S S I Alessi okay um, it is in with the different vinegars and mm-hmm. balsamics yeah. and near the olive oils. Yes. Um, so not refrigerated, but once you open it, it, go- it has to be in the refrigerator. Okay. So it is a premium balsamic reduction. Okay. And it just says use on everything. Does it really? It does. But it's, it is a wonderful product for just easy. It's kind of thick because it's a reduction. Yeah. It's thicker it than just a balsamic. Yeah. It has, yeah, it just squirts out. But it is so perfect for like a bruschetta uh, or for that watermelon salad that has yes. the feta and the mint. Yes. Just, you know, drizzle some on top. It is so delicious and so easy to have. So you don't put it on everything, but you definitely I don't literally use it. put it on everything. Yes. It that says sounds you can. so good. It is so good. And um, just nice to have on hand for those kind of for sure summer salads for sure it's sweater weather and soup season y'all laura beth here to tell you about zoop z-o-u-p zoop broths bring flavor to southern staples like really great grits while their soups provide a comforting meal zoop is available at your favorite retailers across the country including instacart and online at walmart.com for you amazon shoppers use promo code 20 magnolias Two zero Magnolias to get twenty percent off your first purchase on Amazon. Learn more at zoopbroth.com. And now on with the show. Other sides, you mentioned potato salad. Well, that just screams cookout to me. Oh, yeah, you got to have a good potato salad. A good one, like somebody make it. Somebody if, make if, it. If the last. Or the sort of the worst case scenario should be picking it up from the store, yeah, right? Yeah, Publix has a pretty decent um, one that's their brand that okay. I think is pretty good. It's the 
got the skin on it. Like, I don't oh, remember. Yeah, that that one, one's those pretty good. kind of red potatoes. But, um, yeah, I love a homemade one, and I have a hilarious story. So I went to see my friend Laura. Okay. And we were having dinner, and her husband had smoked some ribs, and she had made some sides. They're such a cute They're couple for that cooks. reason. Yes. Anyway, she um, took a bite of her potato salad, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is such good potato salad. And she said, it's from Food That Says Welcome, which is a cookbook I gave her <laughs> by Barbara Smith. And so, anyway, her it's her southern potato salad recipe okay. that, she, that Laura had used. That's so funny because I thought you were going to say she told you it was cauliflower. Do you remember the cauliflower oh, potato yeah. salad that we tried like last summer or something? And I like that kind of stuff, but it's not the same. It's not the same, but, but somebody good. listening is trying not to eat potatoes. So yes. They're like, that would actually be me. Okay, so, I can yeah. get on board with that. There is a cauliflower potato salad, and I would say you don't notice. Um, Unless you're the one that made it, and that's all you can think about. But Yeah, yeah. Especially you wouldn't, it doesn't bother me if I'm, it's one of two or three things on my plate. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Which if it's potato salad, it's going to be. Yeah. I also pulled out Rodney Scott's potato salad recipe because you remember oh, how good his was? Yes. I didn't know you had the recipe. I, I forgot you had that this book. this recipe. Okay. And it is so similar to the Barbara Smith one. Interesting. That I was like, basically, these are so similar in ingredients, you know. So they both have the uh, mayonnaise. They both have the mustard. They both have... Um, sweet pickle relish i love sweet pickle relish so so much all the important things the eggs yeah the hard-boiled eggs yes um that's very my, good. that's my kind of potato salad what you just described yes because uh, i do like mustard and red mine. onion i know some yeah. people don't you can leave yeah. it out yeah. but well the barbara smith cookbook that you mentioned is out of print so i might just link in the show notes to the rodney scott because you can't find her unless you already have a copy okay of food that says welcome well this is um a cookbook called United St- United Tastes of the South. So cute. And so it's not all Rodney Scott recipes. Right. But it does have I his potato salad. I bet his is salad. online, though. Oh, probably. Yeah. That's what I'll link to. You're so savvy. <laughs> uh, we talked about fried corn in our episode about um, family heritage. Yes. And that episode was a couple of episodes ago. But creamed corn, for sure, right? Yes. Maybe some sort of like fried okra. Would you see that at a Southern Labor Day cookout? Yeah, you could see that. Um, our dad loved fried okra. Yeah. So he would love it if it was at a cookout. Yeah. Um, the only thing is with okra, fried okra, I don't think, to me, it's it's best right out of the skillet. Mm. Like if it's been sitting for a while, like yeah. that breading gets kind of, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. So I don't know that I would make that for a cookout. Yeah. But slaw. You've got to have some good coleslaw. <sighs> good old coleslaw. I love co- coleslaw. will cool you down too. And I also like a mixture of mayonnaise and vinegar. Yes. Like some people only do one or the other. Yes. Like kind of a mix. Yeah. And I like purple. Um, a little of the cabbage purple cabbage in, in there, there too. Not Makes just, it prettier too. Not just a milky. Yeah. We're both making a face like we've had that store bought. Oh, before yeah. yeah i even like i have a recipe that you put a little apple in there shredded apple oh and that tastes so good in coleslaw too i can totally see that mm-hmm. baked beans with lots of brown sugar and piggy parts in that's there. right a little bacon in there mm-hmm. maybe fried green tomatoes since you were saying tomatoes yeah, in season the, but that would be finding this... a re- green one now might yeah. be a challenge because they're they're pretty ripe and yeah we're getting to the tail end of that but if you still have green ones coming yeah. in even just some tomatoes on a plate looks oh, yeah. so beautiful and even if you're on, even if you're not intending on people putting it on their hamburgers which they could just to eat tomato yeah would be delicious i know i love the whole veggie plate thing of summer veggies mm-hmm. where that's all you're having is Mm-hmm. three or four veggies with mac and cheese that we call a veggie that's a veggie come on <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other sides that you think of when you think of cookouts for well lemonade? i mentioned i still yeah i just love still watermelon getting the watermelon in yeah so so yummy to well me. And just yeah a big bowl of fruit of yeah. any kind 
Uh, I have a pretty long list of desserts, which is hilarious now that I'm looking at this because I'm like, I had a few sides and less than that salads, but my desserts is my long list. Now, that's funny because I did not go with any desserts other than I said I do love having popsicles, be those homemade or store-bought because adults and kids love popsicles. They do. It's a really cheap way, too, if you've got, like, a lot of people yeah. coming over. That's a very cheap way but to have But there's some fun ones out there, even adult popsicles, yeah. you know, where you have a little alcohol Oh, they're, in like, there. like Oh, yeah. okay. That's so funny. I hadn't thought about that. Those kind of things can be just a fun little theme. <laughs> I've not thought about a boozy popsicle. That's hilarious. Well, icebox pie, just in general. Oh, yeah. Again, did a whole episode on that, so if you don't know what we're talking about when we say icebox pie, I can link to, to that. that. That key lime pie that I mentioned, well, I call it a key lime pie. It's a lime cracker pie that I mentioned a couple it sounded episodes Sounded so ago. good. A couple of people made it. R- Loved let us it. Know. it so easy, so good. So I'll link to that again because that would be like, you're going to look like a really good cook if you That's make so that. fun. And then I still love the Edwards key lime pie that's yes. in the frozen section. No shame. It's so good. No shame. In fact, like we would encourage that. Yeah. yeah strawberry pretzel salad oh yeah the, and like, all the fluffs we yes been, yeah those Fluff are all good in the summers yeah the strawberry pretzel salad has like that red jello cream cheese pretzel situation so yes. that could be like a side or a dessert or both yeah and if you have a buffet table you could put it in the in-between of the veggies there you go the- you're transitioning between <laughs> sides and desserts with the strawberry pretzel salad Strawberry shortcake, uh, homemade peach ice cream. Oh, that is something I meant to jot down in my notes. Is It's a wonderful time to, you know, use your ice cream maker yes. again. Yes. Um, and so many of them are not crank anymore, like we had to do. Like we were cranking oh, for yeah. ice cream. Yeah. Like taking turns. Everybody's. Yeah, ours isn't cranking, but. Um, still good. So good. And have, did I mention to you. I just thought this was kind of a fun, kind of silly in a way, but also kind of clever. There is an is a ball uh-huh. for kids to play with. Oh, you told me about this, but I don't know if we said it on the podcast. I need to pull up a pic and maybe you can link to it in the show notes. Anyway, it's like the size of a normal... Like a basketball size, right? Basketball. Maybe a little smaller. Okay. Smaller than that. But like that you would just kick around in the yard. Okay. Anyway, the whole concept is you mix up this ice cream concoction and put it inside and the kids have to kind of earn their ice cream (laughs) so they're kicking it around you know what i'm saying getting some exercise and then once it's ready you get to eat your ice cream i think it's clever (laughs) clever slash cruel it's i think it's clever oh they're gonna be out there running anyway i know it's kind it's kind of the work of remember those marble slab creameries where that were so popular for a time they would work so hard on a marble slab mixing it in to get it such a good consistency well this is yeah kick it around and get all the ingredients mixed up that is hilarious frozen in this do they know they're doing it i guess they do it's not like they would after the first time yeah that's true the ball is out (laughs) y'all come on peach anything really oh i mean just having peaches peaches with just a little whipped cream on it peach cobbler peach anything would peach be anything wonderful. even just eating them and letting them juice everywhere with mm-hmm. paper towels next to it yes this also makes me happy banana pudding that would that's be that's a huge you mentioned key lime pie i mean again just anything that's cold <laughs> right that's right anything that's cold a moose anything Chocolate yeah. mousse or- and anything that you're not using the oven inside the house, heating yes. up the oven, right? Yes. We were grilling outside and everything else. We're just chopping and putting out. Yeah. Yeah. Cold. Yeah. I don't have a good Labor Day soundtrack to mention, but I'm sure there's oh. many, many out there that you can just look up. So that's important to have some good tunes going. Definitely spray your yard for mosquitoes, oh, that's right? That's so cute. I, was, I haven't thought about the whole soundtrack, but there's some fun you know of um i don't want to work oh yeah i want to bang oh. like there's all, now i'm gonna have gonna get me put going a on playlist all the, that's your working nine to five <laughs> all the um take a break from work songs. money for nothing and your chicks for free that's right okay so i'll have you do a labor day soundtrack for us but yeah i mean i'm not kidding on the mosquitoes like oh, citronella man. candles do nothing spray your yard 
do some due diligence ahead of time, especially yeah. if you're eating outside. I mean, if you're just cooking out and bringing it right back in, okay, no big deal. But most of us would be sitting outside, yeah. I think. Yeah. So the main thing is that you just gather your friends, gather your people. Yeah. And it's not about how fancy the spread is. It's just, did you did you gather? Yeah. So if you want to ask everybody to bring a side and you grill the hot dogs, great. Yes. And I hope y'all know that we are totally kidding on store-bought things. We like to laugh about, you know, like store-bought being the worst possible thing you could ever do. But if it's no. your Labor Day and it's your day off. <laughs> For sure. And that's a lot of work to you, then don't. And if it's going to make you not do it, it's more about, and like I said, there are good store-bought options out there. There are. There are. Yes. So... Happy early Labor Day. We'll be talking to y'all in advance of Labor Day, but we just wanted to go ahead and get y'all thinking about and making plans. So that and... you could make your plan and invite your peeps. Yes. Okay. Have a good week. Peace, Peace be, be with, with y'all. You.